Presenting to you today is Lambda Bunker, one of the more underrated maps of the game. Um, which is a bit unfair because it's pretty good overall. It's got some good item placement. Though, I think it might be because it's actually a portion of a single player map, which you'll see shortly. Yeah, so for those who have only ever happened to play the multiplayer and never gotten the far enough into the single player, uh, this is a portion of a map from the chapter of the game called Forget About Freeman. Like, a directly cut and paste almost. In fact, I believe... I don't know if it's in this elevator here. No, no, it's over here. It's over here. Um, over here in this little building here is where you come in from the single player portion. And the change level trigger is actually still there somewhere. I don't know if, like, you know, where exactly. Alright, so, uh, the one responsible for bringing this into multiplayer, I don't know if they were the ones who actually designed it in single player, but it was our friend Dave Riller again. Um, oh, hello. And, uh, yeah. So, you got, obviously, the gauze up there. Or, I'm sorry, the Egon. Still getting those confused. Um, if you move down, you got some ammo up there, too. You might not want to stay in there, though, because someone's probably going to lob some explosives there. Got some ammo here and some good hiding spots. A lot of good hiding spots. There's also some crates here when you begin the map, but those are not going to survive too long. Uh, another map I only recommend about eight people, which is about the, the kind of the magic number for a lot of Half-Life maps, in my opinion. Um, take advantage of these crates here to jump up to here if you can. It's a little bit tricky. You can't go from there, but you can definitely get from here. Um, get yourself an SMG. I don't know if there's any grenades here because Spider-Man has been fucking hogging them all, like, you know, dancing around over here, so we'll just have to find out, uh, later. Might be. We'll never know. Uh, health station, of course. This is the alternate way to get up here. Which, you know, you get some supplies going up there. This is how you get up to this area, which, you know, uh, you get, if you have the high ground, you can, like, you know, mess around with some people trying to get up to here, but, you know, be careful because you can always come around. Uh, get some health here. Now, you got a couple ways to go here, but they, it is roundabout in the way that, uh, even though it's not as roundabout as Datacore was, you can get from here to here and vice versa, depending on where you go. So, first, we'll take a look. Uh, keep, uh, keep this area in mind. First, you got grenades and some explosives. This is a little explosive corner. Which, by the way, uh, if you start this map, there are a bunch of explosive crates here that the uh, JK body always seems to like blowing up on itself. Uh, be careful when you start. I assume not everyone's going to start at the same time. So, if you are the one who starts near there, get out of there as soon as possible. Um, or, better yet, head this way so you can get the gauze. But you'll have to do some a little bit of jumping to get. And, like, you know, some... You know, moving around. This is where the map leads you in single player, I believe. Uh, you eventually take one of the pipes here. It's been a while since I've played uh, for the chapter Forget About Freeman. Uh, but yeah, this is where it normally leads you in single player. But if you're in multiplayer here, it's where you can get the shotgun. There's nothing really in the water, though, so don't worry too much about it. There is stuff, don't get me wrong. You do get some of the ammo for the Egon here. But, you know, you really don't want to be in that corner too much. Coming this way, you got some more pistol clips. Always helpful. Nothing in this area here. Unless there's some ammo. Got a fucking charger there. I You can tell I haven't played this one nearly as much. Uh, again, it's mostly because, you know, I never... When I played it on, you know, multiplayer servers, no one really ever had this in rotation, which is a shame. Because it actually is kind of fun. Especially once you have some explosives or like, you know, the high-powered weapons. Uh, speaking of explosives, we've got some rockets. There, you got some grenade, grenade rounds down there if you got the SMG. Even more rockets, which is helpful because the rocket launcher happens to be right over there alongside the long jump. Now, the only problem is, though, is that if you're trying to get this, people are going to be noticing you all the way over here. So if someone's got a long-range weapon or something, you might not have a good time coming this way. But yeah, see, that's what I mean. Now we wrap back around. Going the other way real quick, the final area of the map is interesting because you got one of the absences or whatever you want to call them here. I, I don't know what the technical canon name for these are. But if you go around it, you can get some health. Both from here and here is important. Now obviously you want to jump up to here. Now, good little hiding spot there. It is a little bit hard to get on those pipes, but it is entirely possible even without the long jump. You can hide up here and lay some traps or snipe, but don't stick around too long. You can also get from there up to here to get some ammo. 
especially some grenade rounds, very important. Now here is interesting, because not only can you get some snarks, again, which will help with the trap laying, but if you go up here, you get the crossbow and that little exit we pointed out earlier. So yeah, snipe time can happen from here, but you know, people are obviously going to take notice, so you might want to move up to the pipes too, and then hide and like, you know, lay your traps and snipe from there for a bit. Obviously you want to keep moving on, because someone's going to notice you eventually. And uh, yeah, not much more to say. Fun times, um, a little bit underrated, but we'll, let's show, let's give it an honest look here. It's funny because, I, as far as I'm aware, this is the only time they took a portion of the single player and directly deposited it into a multiplayer map. Which reminds me a lot of how the, um, a lot of older first person, sh like, boomer shooters used to do it. Where you would actually just play on the single player maps themselves. And then, like, the, like, the items would be, like, changed in the multiplayer mode to, like, you know, have more for the players around. And, like, so, like, you know, it's just funny that this is, like, the only kind of remnant of that. I mean, this is actually one of the first major ones I could, like, first person I could think of where it didn't even give you the option to, like, play the single player maps in multiplayer. Because, you know, famously, Quake actually launched with six deathmatch maps that are really well regarded to this day. But that didn't stop you from, like, them, and for, like, them from, like, actually adding in multiplayer support for every single player map in the game, regardless of how, like, suited it was for that purpose. Like, you know, even before that, Doom didn't even give you the option. You had to, in, like, Doom 1 and 2, it was just the single player maps. So, it's just funny that, you know, this is actually one of the first ones that actually just flat out, like, specifically have a set of maps exclusively for multiplayer and only have those maps for the multiplayer mode. Reminds me of Quake 2, just a little put aside. Quake 2 came after Quake 1, of course, but for whatever reason, there were no de dedicated um, multiplayer maps as far as I'm aware at launch. You literally had to play on the single-player maps again, which is interesting. Probably should have set the frag maps higher, but yeah, this is a little fun fact for you. We'll, we'll do another round, just because I was a little short. Yeah, they added in the multiplayer maps for Quake 2 after launch, though, so it's funny. Shotgun in that tunnel could be really effective if you didn't notice. Though, you know, you might want to be careful. Don't get too cocky because someone can always get that gauze going. Especially because someone can duck under the water too and that might cause you some problems. Obviously, if you're going to use this here too, do be careful not to accidentally fall under the water because I'll just end up wasting your ammo. 